just stop doing this now? Okay, so welcome to um, a University Libraries Virtual Learning Community ULBLC session, A Day in the Life of ER Help. Uh, I think, again, at this point, we all know the deal with the ULBL sessions, these internal trainings, uh, helping us in terms of working from home, learning more about what we all do. You all know me, I'm Sam Harlow. Uh, I am the online learning librarian, as well as some other stuff, liaison librarian. So some logistical things, in case you haven't been to one of these, uh, you are set up to be muted upon entry, and please keep yourself muted during the presentation. Um, but you can turn your audio back on at the end and your camera on at the end if you want to participate in a conversation. Uh, this is being recorded uh, right now, though. If you don't have a microphone, you can just ask your questions in chat, and I will monitor the questions as they come up uh, to help Marcy and Catherine and uh, do uh, the stuff on the background. Uh, so if there's any questions now, you're welcome to put this in the chat. But also remember that there is a LibGuide. So the archived sessions live on there. The um, signups for the next sessions coming up for this week and the next are on there. Uh, so keep that in mind and stay tuned even at the end, even if you don't want to stay for the, you know, in talking part, because there is a quick assessment I will be sending out in the chat. So um, you can put questions in the chat right now if you want, but today's session is a day in the life of ER Help, led by Marcy Burton and Catherine Nunnally from Technical Services. So um, welcome. And I'm going to meet myself. Thanks. Hey guys, welcome to um, this session with Catherine and I, as Sam said, a day in the life of ER Help. Um, just want to tell you a little bit about ER Help and, and as Sam said, you're more welcome to ask questions as we go along, but the, we will leave time at the end for questions also. So thank you for attending today and um, let's go ahead and get started. ER, our ER help team is made up of Catherine Nunley, Darren Lee, Needham, Norman Hines, and myself. We make up the ER help team. Um, hopefully we'll be hiring a new electronic resources library and soon to replace Kate. We're in the beginning phases of that. Our committee has formed and um, we have started taking applications. So hopefully here soon we will get uh, a new ER help librarian in. <clears throat> um, Catherine and I consider ourselves the first line of defense. We monitor the um, ER help at uncg.edu email um, on a daily, even by a minute by minute basis. Catherine and I make it a competition to see who can get the um, ER help email first. Um, she's quite competitive and she has tripped me a couple of times just to get to it first. Uh, just joking. Uh, she, we are pretty competitive to uh, see who can answer that email, which is great for you guys. Um, if we can't answer the question or the problem, if it has something to do with maybe a, do we still have a subscription to or something like that, we'll go to Darren Lee and Norman. We kind of consider them tier two. They'll check invoices and subscriptions to see if we still have a current subscription or for whatever reason it's ended. Sometimes the vendor will just stop our access just for whatever reason and they'll have to turn it back on. So, um, so we go to them and sometimes we have to get other technical services colleagues involved like Ann Owens and Michelle Courtney, kind of the same situation, but maybe to deal more with eBooks versus databases and serials um, that normally that normally excuse me that Dan Lee and Norman normally um, can answer those questions about serials and databases. Um, we normally check just during Monday through Friday during business hours um, and that's kind of what we state on our um, response when you fill out the ER help form but um, I do check on the weekends and at nights because I'm a sucker and I feel sorry for the students and I can't imagine you know if it's 10 o'clock and I'm trying to write a paper and the one resource that I needed I can't get so I do check it and then um, you know that way hopefully they can finish up whatever project they're working on. We do set up uh, like a vacation setting for um, 
the ER help to let students know, like if it is a holiday, not to anticipate, you know, a quick reply, um, you know, but I, as I said, I normally do check it just cause I'm a sucker. Um, so let's see. I think we're ready to move on to the next slide, Catherine. Okay, uh, you contact ER Help when you come across problems with ebooks, e journals, online journal articles, e scores, streaming audio and video, and databases. Pretty much all our online resources that, that you access through the library's website. So, to be exact here, in the WMS Knowledge Base or the KB, which is what helps us manage our electronic resources. There are 1,325 collections, 259 of which we created and maintained ourselves. There are almost 2.7 million titles, including print journals in those collections, 1.7 and a half million eBooks, and almost 482,000 journals. The remainder is streaming media, audio and films, and others like images and scores. These numbers change constantly based on purchasing and canceling of sub sub subscriptions. All of these titles are supposed to show up in the public catalog. And if they are an ebook, e journal, or print journal, they will also show up in the A to Z list. Patrons come across a variety of errors and problems when trying to access our electronic resources from on and off campus, though lately more off campus, of course, now. One of the biggest problems is article linking. Uh, we get those on a daily basis. It, they come in very often. That usually occurs when the catalog article record citation is incorrect, or if it wasn't indexed properly in the database, it's trying to link with. Also, it's possible that ProQuest or Gale or whatever vendor or database, for whatever reason, just didn't upload the article into their database. And sometimes that happens when the, um, the issue just came out and it just, it's just so new, or if it just got skipped for whatever reason. Um, I believe the second main problem is when the ebook gets mismatched on the wrong record. Also, if uh, it hits a paywall for whatever reason. Uh, the knowledge base tries to be helpful when matching ebooks to records in our catalog, but sometimes a KB record just doesn't have enough information like the OCLC number or ISBN number. And its best, guess, its best guess just isn't the correct one because it's just matching on possibly just the title. And sometimes one word titles are just, it's just really not enough information to match correctly. Um, hitting a paywall can occur, of course, for various reasons. One of which is, as Marcy had mentioned before, that the, the vendor just forgot to turn on our access. And that happens occasionally. Also, it happens when the vendor removes an ebook from the collection, but the KB just hasn't been updated yet. And sometimes that could take a few days, or it really it varies on when collections get updated in the knowledge base. So, what we're going to talk about today is um, how, like, how we are notified. Where does this mysterious ER help? emails go to. Um, we're going to talk about what we can do as a team to fix them and then what if we can't fix them and then we when we are able to apply that glorious done label to the emails. So how are we notified? Well as we've already said this is um, a discussion of life at the day of ER help. So obviously our ER, our email address is erhelp at uncg.edu. You can email us directly with that email or um, you may find that link in other places. The other places you may find that link would be through a report, a broken link link. So as you can see here, this is discovery. Um, we, um, we've looked up a book here. It says that we do have an ebook available. If you go to that ebook and you find that that link is broken or it's going to uh, the wrong book or whatever, to the right you'll see report a broken link. When you click on that link, um, it will take you to a form. 
But first, too, we can also find this link in the A to Z list. There again, report a broken link for the A to Z um, serial list or journal list. And this form will appear and you can fill out the form. Um, and we ask you to be as graphic as possible. And when I gave this presentation back in the summer, people laughed and went, graphic, are you sure you want us to be as graphic as possible? Just uh, try to leave out the curse words and maybe just put some um, guy critics or symbols of characters in to um, replace the words that you really wanted to use when you described this problem. But, um, and also try to be, ag again, graphic and specific as possible. Um, and when you send an email, um, not necessarily using this, sent, this form, but when you send an email, if you can send a screenshot, we love screenshots. And that helps us quite a bit to determine um, what the problem is. If, if you're not specific and you're very vague, then um, it's just harder for us to determine the problem. And then we have to counter back and forth with emails, you know, asking, well, did it say this? Or, you know, did it do this? Um, and so it would just obviously take longer to resolve the problem because we're having to send emails back and forth. Um, and again, if we don't know it's broken, we can't fix it. So if you run across anything, even if it's an incorrect book image, that's, we've gotten emails about that before. So that didn't even really have anything to do with ER help, but that is something we will, we would report to OCLC, um, and let them know, and they have corrected those for us. And note this report a broken link is only for electronic resources. But if you email us and let us know about a problem, no matter what it is, it could be for a print book or a print journal, it could be for um, pretty much anything. If you email us at ER Help, we will get it to the right person that can hope that can address it and hopefully fix the problem. Um, and also at the top, you'll see request librarian assistance. Um, you do not have to fill out this information. If you don't want to, you can just uncheck the box and send report and it will send us the basic information. Um, but it will obviously will not tell us what the issue was, but it will send us the basic information. And, um, uh, you know, obviously then we won't know who sent it, so we can't get back with you about it. But that's, that's an option that, that you do not have to fill out the information. And um, so let me go ahead and we'll send it over to Catherine. Catherine. Yeah, I forgot to unmute myself, so that's my own fault. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Thank you. And what if we can't fix it? Okay, and probably about maybe maybe about seventy percent of the incidents we we receive we can resolve ourselves one way or the other, whether it's correcting a broken link or an unnecessarily linked item we can fix those. In this example here, uh, Le Leanne gave us the fix. She gave us in the description of the issue. She told us it was broken, but she also provided what a link to the the, the, the book where she found the book there. Thank you, Leanne. And we like Thank it. You, yeah. Always yeah. nice when you give us fixes because that, that also helps us a lot. We like for people to do work for us. <laughs> because we're lazy like that. Um, sometimes we have to cut. Oh, wait, is that the right one? I yeah. went to the next one after that one, Catherine. Okay, I think I got it myself. Let me go. Okay, and here's an example of where the patron was having problem accessing an article. I provided her with a possible fix, but I have also attached the article in case that didn't work. So uh, sometimes patrons don't respond back to us when it comes to fixes we give them. It, it would be nice to know if it was fixed with that solution, but sometimes they, they don't do that. And, and that's why I provide a PDF in my email if I have access to it. And sometimes um, we can tell the patron straight away that we do not have access to the item. 
that it's an error on our end. In this example here, the patron was trying to access what she thought was Disney's um, movie Frozen, but linked her to a movie called Frozen Food Factory, which is pretty much not a Disney movie. Uh, the problem was caused by the KB incorrectly matching the um, e-streaming video to the DVD record. Uh, Marcy told her right away that we don't have access and that she removed the, um, the link pretty much that day, hopefully. I mean, it varies on how quickly that link can be removed in the record. Sometimes we have control over what we can edit in the KB, but sometimes we have to send it out to be fixed. So um, when sorry. that, kind of, oh, sorry, go ahead, Marcy. No, go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, so when this kind of problem happens with books or DVDs, we pretty much tell them that if we have access to uh, the print copy to come into the library, check it out, or to go through interlibrary alone. I just want to say that's a prime example of matching on title only. Mm -hmm. um, with books, we normally have an I ISBN, or with journals, we'll have an, our serials will have an ISSN that they can match on. But with videos, we do they don't have that option. So if there's no OCLC number that we have for that video, then a lot of times it'll only match on title. And that's a prime example of when it does and how it mismatches because Frozen Food Factory is nowhere close to Disney's Frozen. No, it is not. Uh, all right, thanks, Catherine. <laughs> that was a good example. Uh, sometimes we have to contact OCLC, uh, the vendor, which could be eBook Central, Taylor & Francis, JSTOR, whatever, or the direct publisher to see if it can be corrected on their end. Unfortunately, sometimes it can be may take a couple of months for that problem to be resolved, and mo but mostly it can be a couple of weeks. It really varies based on who we have to contact and what the problem actually is. Uh, we will let the patron know pretty much immediately if we don't think it's going to be a quick fix. If it's an article linking problem that I can't fix, but I'm able to access the article in some way, I'll send the patron the PDF. So at least they have access that way. But uh, if, however, no one on the ER team can get access we point them to interlibrary loan right away if it's an ebook or journal article, and hopefully they can get it that way. Okay, and here's the resolve section. It's always nice when it's resolved. Okay, in the end, we can apply the, the label, the done label, which is always a lovely feeling, and it gets removed from the inbox. Uh, we tend not to delete these emails at all, just in case the issue pops up again and we have to look back on it. There are some workarounds and fixes that the publisher's emails or um, publisher or vendor supplies us that are sometimes useful, especially when it comes to streaming video or if there's a, like a, a different like a database that has had problems before. It's always good to look back to see if those problems that are happening now are the same that had happened in the past. We also uh, keep emails just for statistical purposes. And also was very helpful in this presentation just to look back on what we've actually done before, just to look at it. Um, there are a few lingering emails that we still have from last year that we are waiting for OCLC or a publisher to correct. And sometimes we have to nudge them every so often about it just to see if they ha they're still working on it or if they forgot about us completely, so it was a possibility. However, there are some things that just can't get fixed because OCLC usually just hasn't figured out how to do it yet. And that's always a problem. Sometimes it's the WMS system or it could be just the discovery um, layer as well. A variety of reasons why they can't fix a problem. And as you can see, this email is from Mark and we <laughs> will miss Mark greatly when he retires. Oh yes, yes he will. He's always been good to um, uh, find issues and let us know because, as I said, if we don't know it's it's broken, we can't fix it. So, and Mark swears that he does not just sit down and look for problems. That he just does. <laughs> <laughs> he just runs across them. But we will mix Mark when he is gone when he retires this summer. So, best wishes to Mark. And if you find any. You know, while you're retired, by all means, Mark, please continue to send them to us. <laughs> um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, our live guides and how um, those provide us with information. We do have a elect um, an electronic resources troubleshooting tips 
page on our library page we have an ebooks live guide and a streaming media live guide so i'm actually going out to these so bear with me as i toggle back and forth between the two hope for the best and hope for the best as catherine says so this is our electronic resources troubleshooting tips it's kind of an faq for problems um, whether it's something uh, you should contact us for or whether it's something you should maybe contact six tech for um, here are some information about deleting cache and cookies for the various browsers that uh, are popular browsers that are used so here's some information here on this page we also have um, the ebooks libguide and with that there's all sorts of information about ebooks but there also is a troubleshooting tab here and various um, forms of uh, access them through iPads, Kindles, Nooks, that sort of thing, and some FAQs there. And of course, also using Adobe Digital Editions, which is the product that ProQuest eBook Central requires you to use to view their eBooks. And then the streaming media, which is something we really hadn't talked a lot about, but it causes us many problems also. Um, oh, canopy. <laughs> yes, Canopy is one. Um, here's the information about Swank, which is what our professors, is for faculty only, as you can see here. Um, our faculty use these um, videos. So here's information about how to gain access to those. Kathy Rothermill works with us to provide access for those. Canopy, we recently in the last um, few months to a year have had to move over to mediated access for Canopy. So here's a form. So we have an example for our faculty on how to fill out that form for their students and classes. And then also, I just got a question last week about embedding streaming media into Canvas. And how did this professor want to know how to embed this video into her class for canvas so i sent her here to this page so those are a couple of just a few more resources on using um, electronic resources and just to remember for all of your e-resource needs erhelp at uncg.edu be more than glad to um, look at those and try to answer um, as best we can and as quickly as we can. Um, as I said, Catherine and I work really hard on trying to um, answer those as soon as they come in. Of course, you know, there are times that we can't answer them, but, but we do make that a top priority in our day to, um, to access ER help and to answer those e emails that you guys send in, whether they be through the form, through discovery or the A to Z list, or it's just a direct email so with that it was a fairly short session for us um i think we i think we did good because i think my lightning round was only seven minutes so we did Four. it lightly. so um but we want to know if you guys have any questions for us um so sam do we have yeah any do y'all have there's no questions in the chat so far mostly just comments well, it says Megan has raised her hand, so I don't know if Megan has a question. I do have a question. Megan. Hi, Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I really actually frequently have an issue, like when I do find a broken link in the catalog and I hit the report link button, it won't send. Hmm. So I don't know hmm. like, about that. Yeah, and then I'm bad about really being lazy and not just turning around and sending you an email. Okay. I will try to do better, but yeah, it's... Yes, please let us know if that continues because that's something we uh, definitely would need to contact OCLC yeah. about. That'd be an OCLC. We'd have to talk to them to see if it, I mean, is it like consistent, like every day or is it like, I mean... Uh, 
it, yeah, it'll be erratically. It'll, I mean, if it, uh, I'll start keeping track of it and sending you um, an ER help that <laughs> the report won't send. I don't know. Yeah, please do. And, you know, something specific, um, you know, because uh, if it's, it, it maybe is it with a certain type of format? Yeah. Or is it a certain collection? You know, obviously they would need as many, just like us, OCLC would need as many specifics as possible to try to determine what the problem is. So the more specific or graphic. Yeah, say that graphics too. Can be, um, you know, the better. Um, so, but yeah, if you run across that again, please, um, Catherine and I both um, are part of forums and mm -hmm. listservs, and I have not seen anybody else mention that, but, um, but you know, I mean, it, that, that doesn't mean that it's not happening, so we de that's very important. That, 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 that's a big, a big no-no. If you yeah. can't send it, how can you let somebody know? So, and students are quick to get frustrated. Yes. And yes. so if it doesn't work, they'll just give up, move on to something else. So yeah, we would definitely need to address that if you're finding, find, finding that problem, so. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so one of the questions in the chat um, is I, Maggie commented, um, I sometimes have that issue with WorldCat trying to email a book record to myself or a patron using their email form. I just assume it's a temporary timeout issue. Um, sorry, am I like? Well, you could be right, I, Maggie. It could be just yeah. it, it sat for a while and it has timed out. And then when you try to actually click the send button, you've timed out because it's sat so long. That could be it. Um, but I would still think if that's the problem, that that would be something that they should address. They should increase the timeout uh, window if that's the case or, you know, something. So if you do run across that again, please, you know, let us know so we can share that with OCLC. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I, um, I haven't had the issue specifically with the ER help form, but I have noticed that in WorldCat with yeah. the, their other email form. So uh, hmm. it hadn't occurred to me to report it because usually it happens in the middle of library instruction uh, when I have a bunch of things pulled up uh, doing a search and I'll, one of the students will be like, oh, that's actually my topic. Can you send me that book? And then I'll try to send it to them and it doesn't work. So that's why it seems like a timeout issue because I would have had the page open for a long time before trying yeah. to email it. So. You're, that's what I was getting ready to say. You probably have various tabs open. Yeah. You can move to them quickly and that, and that could be a timeout issue. But, so if that's the case, Megan, yeah. you might just try to refresh the page and then send it again. Yeah. Oh, that would make sense. I mean, because I never have less than 10 or 20 tabs open. So. <laughs> Gotcha. I'll try that. Well, and if you've been on that page for a while, you know, then you move to another tab and then you move back to that. It just, it does time out. And I can try to ask, you know, if, if they, know, um, excuse me, if there is a certain timeout, like if it sits for 15 minutes idle with no activity, yes, it's going to time out, that sort of thing. So I'll try to ask them, um, do they know that there is a certain time out? It probably is. I wouldn't be surprised. It used to be with WMS, the back end that we use for our cataloging and of course check in, check out. It time when we first moved to WMS, it timed out very quickly. It was annoying as hell. It was annoying as hell, as Catherine says. I've been pretty and good with my language lately, so <laughs> <laughs> so um but that, I don't know if people complained about that enough that they extended or lengthened that timeout period, but I don't notice it quite as bad. You know, if I get, if I open up WMS in the morning and then maybe it sits, maybe after lunch, then it could, and I really haven't used it a lot for whatever reason, say I'm working on a spreadsheet or something, then I go back to it. Now that's several hours of sitting and I'll actually get an error message so it would be nice too if it does time out that they would let you know that it is timed out instead of just you know you click the send button and nothing happens so like you would know megan oh it's timed out <laughs> that would be nice also okay so 
Are there any other questions for the chat um, or you can unmute yourself as y'all are thinking about it. Um, let me announce the next coming up sessions. So next week on the 28th, we have a day in the life of digital projects. Um, on the 29th, we have the reading club. If you're in that design for people learn, uh, there's a session this afternoon and then there's a session next week as well. On Friday, we have all about archive space from migration to rare book applications uh, with Patrick. Yay. And uh, all of these sound great. Sorry, I'm going to the next screen. And then Monday, May 4th, we have four years of teaching fake news with Jenny Dale. On Tuesday, the 5th, uh, May 5th, we have advanced search. The catalog can do that with uh, Anna Kraft and Tiffany Henry. And on Thursday, uh, May 7th, we have a re another reading session if you're in that club. Um, so again, remember that I've been um, fill, uh, sending that assessment form in the chat. So does anyone have any questions uh, before I stop recording and let people hang out? This is Ann Simons. Hey. Hey. Um, I, I had to step away for a while, so I, I hope y'all haven't already talked about this, but um, why is it that um, when I give a patron um, or even when I try it myself, a link to a bib record, you know, you've got the bib record and you click on that link thing and it comes up in the box. Um, sometimes it will open and sometimes it gets an error message. Why? What kind of error message? Uh, I can't remember. Um, I, mean, I want to make sure we're on the same page and we're talking about the same yeah. thing. So let me just pull up um, and look at my favorite subject. Oh, God. <laughs> surprise, um, surprise. We always pick with Terry because in our meetings, he'll always search for bonsai. So I had to find something different. I couldn't copy Terry um, and search for bonsai. So I, I, I assume you're talking about here in this link? Yes. Okay. So you're saying sometimes you click this and this box appears? Or and, sometimes I mean, it, it always appears, but, you know, I copy it and, and paste, paste it. Or, I mean, you know, I do a search with the link and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And I can't remember what it says when it so doesn't you're, work, you're, but it just. You're doing, you're doing like control C. <coughs> Excuse me. So while it's highlighted, you're doing like control C and you open up a new uh -huh. search box. And you just no, I don't no, I don't do that. Okay. I just I just open up a new tab and and put the link in the address bar. Oh like this. Okay. Like that. Yep. And sometimes it copies and sometimes it doesn't. No, no. sometimes now now try to go there. Okay, it's working. Okay, right. That's what it should do, but sometimes it doesn't. And then, um, it, you know, even when I'm trying it myself at work, um, and then sending it, sometimes I'm sending it to a patron, and, um, sorry, um, and it won't work for them, and Sometimes it works if we put the proxy link in front of it, yeah. which I don't understand why we would yeah, the, that, should need to do that. Yeah, the proxy link uh, should not affect this link at all. I, um, that, I wouldn't think so either, but. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure. Um, Be hard not without knowing the error message, really. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, next time it happens, I'll send it to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. screenshot, yeah. screenshot. Okay. Yeah, as Catherine said, we love screenshots. So it does help us understand um, much better what the problem is to what help. What browser you're using too, it. maybe? <clears throat> because as you see, when you click the link button, it's highlighted all, the only thing I can think of is maybe it's not picking up all of the URL and yeah. then when it pastes back in, I don't think that's it, but um, so maybe yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pay more attention. I'm seeing an error message and just, you know, um, like the URL that's in the address box, that sort of thing, without seeing the, the big picture. 
but okay. but um, <laughs> it would be it's a little hard to try to diagnose it the problem right. so, yeah i just i didn't know if it was something y'all already knew about no, I, we have not i have not been made aware of it so yeah definitely next up. time it happens uh, send us some screenshots and we will yeah. try to figure it out send it to oclc if we need to okay thank you so much you're welcome y'all are always so helpful thank you we we try to be um i always try to put myself and everybody else's shoes what if i was you know was that person and needed help and so i think you could describe me if that was me you know type thing <laughs> Okay, so does anyone have any questions uh, before I stop the recording? Sorry, my kids are in the background. They're hungry for lunch. Well, my husband just came home with some Mama Crockett's apple cider donuts, so I'm getting ready to eat one of those. Yeah, my kids are yelling at me about Cheetos. So um, I'm gonna stop recording.